Hello everyone and welcome to the first recording of one of our EMCDDA webinars. This time we address the responses to homelessness in Europe. Um, there is a well-documented association between being homeless and being vulnerable to drugs-related problems and substance in general related problems. In addition, during the COVID-19 emergency, the problems of those that could be confined in their places because they didn't have a home were completely, um, were very seriously perceived. For these reasons, we decided to explore these uh, type of responses. And we identified three organizations based in the northern center and southern of Europe, namely Finland, Belgium and Portugal. And we asked these guests to describe their project and also to discuss what are the barriers and facilitators factor and conclude with some lessons learned. All this uh, project adopted some type of housing first approach, an approach that foresee the provision of a house uh, as a first step to respond to homelessness. We will hear in one hour and a half webinar directly from their voice, their experiences. Towards the end of the webinar, our guests will reply some questions from the audience and our director will provide some conclusions. Thank you. So um, before that, uh, some two years before that, I was working as a social worker in a small, uh, smaller local uh, city in Kortrijk in the uh, east of Belgium. Uh, but now I am in the coordination. So if it's possible for the next slide. Yeah, there uh, it is. Um, housing First in Belgium, we started as an experiment in 2013 uh, in a way to see if it was possible that Housing First should uh, work in Belgium. And uh, we started with uh, a small experiment, five cities, uh, two Dutch-speaking cities, uh, Brussels as the central city and two uh, French-speaking cities. And uh, after uh, two years, the experiment was already a success and there it was, uh, there were joined some other cities. So we came a little bit bigger. And then in 2016, we ended it with very great uh, results. We saw that it was possible to house uh, people with uh, severe needs uh, and to uh, support them in their uh, housing um, uh, search um, and we see that we had a success rate of uh, 93% uh, next to the um, housing as usual as we say it where we could only uh, have the half of the, the people who were um, helping uh, with support. In next slide now we are uh, already uh, seven years later and we have uh, supported over uh, 800, 850 clients so that's a really a, a big uh, advance we had um, and we are still uh, having having a success rate of 80 86 percent of people who are staying after two years still in their houses and we see also a small number small number one on four of these clients can uh, live on a very independently way in their housing so uh, after some years it's not not in six months that we uh, can manage it but we see that uh, people who had been in the housing first uh, experiment that after some years we are trying to 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 let them be as independent as possible. Uh, yes, next slide. There's uh, our little country uh, in the middle of Europe with the, the different uh, local uh, projects. So uh, the numbers in, in Brussels, uh, there are four projects, but in the other cities there are 
more or less one project each. In total, we are with uh, 250 uh, active clients we are working with. So um, each uh, program of it, each city is more or less on his own, is independently. So there are some accents that can differ between uh, one or other project. Um, Yes, next project, it will be, I think, more interesting for, for you to see. Um, we had some discussions last year about uh, our success rate and there were people who were saying, yes, it's easy if you take all the people uh, who, who are not causing a lot of troubles and you host them, then you will have a lot of success. So we asked our projects, uh, on the, the profile of uh, their clients. So we asked them uh, about the day, the years they spent on the street before they had access to a house of uh, the project. And we see that uh, a lot of them, more than 90% uh, of them are in, had been uh, two years or longer uh, at streets uh, before they had a house of housing first. So that's, uh, uh, very high, and that uh, on the, um, the, pro the problems they received, that um, addiction, addiction to alcohol or to drugs is almost, uh, yeah, there's 10% who don't have problems with addiction. So it's, it's mostly everyone in the project has some problems with alcohol or drugs. It's not only drug use, it's also a very big problem of alcohol, uh, most related to, to the loneliness, but I will speak of that uh, later on. Uh, next to uh, mental problems and, and also um, yeah, psychical problems. You can, you can move to the next slide. I will look at the time, so uh, I have to, to go on. Um, Next thing, next experiment where we are now working on and which I find it very interesting to, to talk about is our experiment Reconnect. Uh, like we started uh, seven years ago with an experiment to see if housing first was possible. Now we are starting off, we are busy with an experiment. We are almost a year uh, busy with it to see if we can add uh, to a housing first project, uh, someone who's, um, we call it a, a reconnection coach, uh, someone who is um, free to look with clients how to find reconnection with the neighborhood, with family, with work processes. So that's uh, a social worker or uh, someone who's helping the clients to, to to see what they can do to find activities uh, to go in group it was a very interesting thing the la gazette you see in the middle is um, a newspaper that is first was written uh, by social workers but now is written with a group of uh, people clients who are uh, writing little texts, writing poems, writing uh, love songs uh, for one another, um, giving uh, tips uh, to where to find uh, free meals, where to go uh, out uh, to, to do activities. Um, we had uh, uh, some really nice um, groups works also, but then we uh, had some uh, very strange uh, corona uh, thing that going on so everyone is now in his own house uh, which uh, is is very sad because uh, they there cannot be uh, group work anymore but we try to keep up contact with uh, our clients uh, through the individual way through the the cell phone through whatsapp and so on and uh, we, we find it very important for, for people because they, they say, uh, you're the only one I hear in, in throughout the week because there's no one who is concerned about me. There's no one looking at me. Uh, everyone is uh, before his own television screen and, and no one is, is caring for each other. So it's very um, important to, to have that connection uh, that's still going on. That's for uh, my first presentation.
Thank you very much, Gert. I would ask the same question to Christiana. So a brief introduction, introduction to your project and if there are relevant things for drugs related problems and any lessons we learned from COVID-19. Christiana. Thank you. So hello everyone. Um, first of all, I will thank to EMCDDA for this opportunity. Um, I also want to, to compliment the rest of the speakers and the people who took this time to, to listen and to share this moment with us. Um, so I will start with our program. Um, uh, Kshir is, is an NGO with 20 years of experience working with uh, vulnerable groups in outreach settings, providing harm reduction and other services for approximately 2,000 people per year. Um, today, I will present one of its projects that is called El Macasa Lisboa First, which is a housing first program for people who experience chronic homelessness and use drugs. So our program are running since, uh, is running since 2013. It provides immediate access to independent, permanent and uh, scattered apartments combined with uh, off-site support and community-based services. Scattered housing is really the key to enable people to take part in the community as any other uh, resident uh, with daily life interaction with neighbors, the use of community services and etc. In this program, uh, there are no preconditions. So any chronic homeless people could engage in the program. A person who uses drugs in a problematic way or not, uh, who refuse psychiatric treatments uh, or medication, has no documentation, Portuguese nationality, or he's in an irregular situation, has time on pre in prison or not, has pets or not. So basically everyone is, is welcome here. Based on harm reduction, we, we meet people where they are and start the support process uh, from that point, helping people gradually gain uh, control over harmful behaviors and at the same time encouraging them to connect and use addiction treatment, uh, mental health services and other uh, services. So in this approach, tenants are their own makers, decision makers, and they drive the process from, the, from themselves. Uh, they are invited to select the, the neighborhood and the apartment where they want to live accordingly with the available uh, choices, obviously, and determine how and when support and community services will be delivered to them. The main goal of this program is to support each tenant to not return to a, to a homeless situation and also aims to support people uh, toward recovery, which begins with encouraging their choice and their, their self-determination. The next slide, please, Alessandra. Thank you. So most referrals to this program are made by Kshir outreach teams, which work directly on the streets with people who use drugs and with problematic use of drugs and alcohol. These teams do the same route and schedule every day, which promotes relationships of proximity and trust. The only screen you do in this program is made to ensure that the most vulnerable are the ones with the most problematic, uh, which are selected and admitted. So the most vulnerable and the ones with the most problematic drug use are the first one to be admitted. Along with uh, long histories of uh, isolation and a totally loss of trust in services, most of our tenants have problematic use of heroin, cocaine, benzodiazepines, and or uh, alcohol. So part of them inject, and um, because our uh, arm veins are destroyed for this um, repeated trauma, some use the neck, groin, legs, and um, eventually they develop localized infections. Infections and diseases like Tuberculosis, HIV, HCV, non-medicator are also very common in this population. So we have uh, our tenants have spent in time 30 years approximately um, on the streets. Okay, now I go briefly uh, through some results. 
here we compare tenant situation before and after their integration. These results comprise data for all the 100 tenants integrated in the program for eight years, with an exponential increase in the last year. When we observe this data at this stage, we see that after entering the program, approximately 30% stopped using a drug or, um, and or alcohol. We also see improvements in uh, linkage to drug treatment and linkage to um, opioid substitution treatment. Alexander, thank you. Um, in this slide, we see that 100% reduced consumption, so lowering the, their dosage. Most of them also pass to smoking way of consumption, reducing injection associated risks. And of course, setbacks happen, uh, relapses happen, but usually people don't return to their initial standpoint. So it's obvious for us the pathway of recovery in every moment. About uh, health, uh, uh, approximately uh, 50 more engage with healthcare services and between 60 to 85% more adhere to medication and um, or psychiatric meds. In terms of um, social services, most of our tenants have a social worker and financial support after entering the program. Approximately 30% develop or restore family ties, and this is a very important aspect. Of course, for us, this are inspired results, um, as long with the most important of all, that is 90% of the tenants who engage in the program did not return to their previous situation. Um, COVID-19 pandemic brought us um, challenges and we need to adapt ourselves. So goods and medication were delivered to uh, high risk tenants and we need um, tenants who were in confinement, prophylactic isolation, or some positive cases. Staff articulated with host uh, programs to provide methadone home delivery. Staff uh, home delivered aseptic material to inject and smoke drug use, kits, syringes, aluminum foils, pipe, forever, uh, when necessary. And in case of people with severe alcohol consumption, alcohol was provided when need. Some of them um, have also started a low threshold for pharmacological treatment before they were housed, which they continue doing afterwards. Naloxone continued to be made available for staff and tenants. And I want to, to highlight one aspect with a big impact um, that was temporary suspension of tenants meetings that compromises the way tenants engage with the program and they take advantage of it. These meetings are moments of exchange experiences, approach common difficulties, um, develop social tools and a greater sense of advocacy. So these moments appear, it's, it's, they are priceless moments. They, they appear as a source of meaning for life and we need to suspend it. Shared projects scale up in more 90 houses during the first wave of, of COVID pandemic. And we also took this opportunity, not, not in a in housing first pro project, but we also took this opportunity to present another project for a managed alcohol program, which uh, basically combines housing with management and supply of regular doses of alcohol as a harm reduction strategy. So this program have, um, had been approved during 2020. Uh, however, a fixed place for its implementation is not available yet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christiana. And now we would like to pose the same question, to ask the same questions to our Northern <laughs> colleagues, Elina and Jonas. So if you can briefly describe your program, how this relates to drugs related problems, and if there is anything from COVID-19 emergency we need to, to bear in mind for the future. Thank you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the situation and the little 
innovations that we have from it. So we have uh, also the Housing First ideologic in here, Finland, and uh, it started from the project uh, 2008, 2011. It was called uh, Get Your Name on the Door. So after that, we have been uh, participating with the Housing First program. I myself have been working these kind of units uh, eight years from now. And two years ago, so 2018, uh, we saw that we need to do little changes on our Housing First program. And I was just wondering how can I put this in English? So, so uh, I, I just uh, started thinking it, it's about uh, seeing, feeling and healing. So we, we saw that uh, our customer, we didn't reach them as good as we should. And then we started this program, we call it Housing First 2.0. So we have been participating this with our customers and workers uh, now like two years. And the results are uh, very promising. So we are uh, reaching people better. So we have to change the ways we do work, the, the, the places that we work so we can sit together this COVID-19 did bad for this program because now we can sit together and play guitar. But uh, the idea is that we are uh, really planning everybody something to do. When you wake up in the morning, you need a place to go. You need to be important. You need to be needed. Today, when I came in this unit, we are in Helsinki now. And this big unit, we have uh, about uh, 100 people living in this unit. And I was walking in the street. There is so much snow everywhere. So it was very hard to get here, like two kilometers from my house. So when I came here to this unit, I saw two guys sitting and smoking. I know those guys. I was, hello, guys, what are you doing? Why are you just smoking? Why aren't you at work? And they were sweating because they have done all the snow job in this area. And that's the point. You, have, you are important. You need to be working or studying. We have kitchens we do put together, but it's, it's a bigger, bigger, bigger issue in Finland. We still have uh, 4,600 homeless people right now, and it's very, very cold here. So you can't really stay on the streets at night, it's impossible. So we have so much to do. This program it has just started. We are doing this in whole Finland. So we have everybody working together. It's not just us in Blue Ribbon. We have so many very, very good people, people who know this area have been doing this work for years, but our customers is the first. So now we are collecting the ideas and material from our customers all the time. So we do everything together. We do nothing just one. That's why we are together here now, because we always need another person to do this. So this program 2.0, uh, you can uh, uh, read it uh, from internet, but uh, it's we are just charging this. So we are so, so very, very happy if you like to collect ideas with us and plan together how we can get started because I was hearing Gert and Christiana who were talking. So we have so many same things that we are all, all the time doing and, and it would be great to just have a new ideas and, and think how we can do this better, how we can make this really, really work. But uh, Jonas now is uh, very aware of the COVID situation. So Jonas will tell you something about that. Hello, I'm working as a nurse here in Blue Ribbon Foundation in Finland. And uh, just the only practical things, we have COVID-19 emergency team. They are meeting together quite regularly following those Finnish government's guidelines and, and some specialist guidelines as well. And, and you know, only keeping masks, everybody, employees, our, our, our clients are keeping masks, keeping distance and breakfast in the morning. Earlier it was 
many people at the same time, not just only one at each. So practical things, because the one thing is that maybe our clients doesn't watch so much television or information from the newspapers. So we have to meet them and keep distance and, and keep this very basic these things all the time, not too, too complicated at the moment, risking that, that uh, COVID-19 virus, virus minimizes risk. Not so innovative maybe, but you know, we have to do basic things and keep it simple and clever. Thank you very much for this important call to simplicity. I will now leave the floor to Alessandra for the following questions. Yeah. So I think that thank you for this introduction to your programs. We are already listening a bit of the challenges. Uh, I think the next two questions uh, are at least for me very important because go down into more the details of the of the implementation. And the first one is about uh, the barriers or facilitators associated with uh, implementing uh, your program. So Gert, first up is you. Thank you. Um, it was very interesting to, to hear about the program in Portugal and Finland also. And indeed, there are some a lot of similarities. So I think we will uh, each one uh, give you some uh, pieces of the puzzle to, to put them together. Um, I um, found to, that there were uh, some, some, um, some aspects I wanted to talk about. Uh, first is the lack of affordable housing. Um, we see that as a, as a really big problem. Um, it's not easy to find a good house and convince house owners to rent to people with uh, severe problems or with house care benefits uh, income. So um, I think that's the problem in Belgium and that's a problem everywhere in, in Europe. Um, we have a, a small stock of social housing, so everyone is looking to the social housing uh, to solve that problem. But even there, uh, there's a long waiting list and uh, not every board of social housing is uh, willing uh, to provide a priority to the housing first uh, client group. The second uh, challenge is the fidelity of the of the model. I already told you that in uh, Belgium we have uh, the luck and the opportunity that each project is uh, independently. So we have a lot of uh, variations on the team, which uh, provide a, a very wide aspect of, of solutions. But there's also the question of the fidelity to the program. And there we see that there is one third of the project that is, as we say, very creative uh, in a way of being. So if it uh, goes to uh, independent uh, living, there are some projects who say, yes, we, we, we would like to go to independent living, but there's a lot of uh, clients who are still living in the same building. And we see that it's, it's problematic sometimes. And it goes a lot of time in uh, uh, discussion about who has stolen the, the, wash, uh, the washing products and who has uh, uh, took uh, the meat out of the refrigerator and so on and so on and so on. And we say there's a lot of, of energies going to, to that discussion and it's not really uh, housing first as we would like it to be. Uh, we see other projects who are um, um, very successfully and so on. They, they keep on uh, taking new clients and now they have uh, a lot of clients and not as many social, uh, social workers as they would like. So there's a problem in uh, how many um, uh, clients uh, one social worker should should follow and it's it's very nice to to see that housing first is successfully but we are a bit uh, um, successfully on that uh, way so that everyone wants to be in the housing first project and it's not easy to to limitate that uh, so that's a, a discussion we are we are uh, 
working on and it's it's not so easy um the next thing is the innovation so we see lots of things happening I already looked in in the chat and uh, saw some questions about that also so we have our reconnection coach i spoke already about that's uh, one way of a new a new way of innovation we see also not so much in in the flemish part but a lot in brussels and the walloon part there is um, in some uh, project there is uh, someone who calls himself a housing catcher and that's uh, one person who is really uh, focusing on uh, finding houses for the clients and to communicate between house owners and clients. So there is a problem about uh, paying tax, of paying uh, the rent, or a problem with uh, the neighborhood or some, some other uh, discussions. Uh, this person can follow uh, this discussion and can, can help. Uh, so it's not the individual worker of the client who has to focus also on that. So the, that's, uh, we think, a very interesting uh, thing to do. And then we are trying, but it's still very... Uh, we have one project who is now starting to peer working. We would like to invest more on that also, but that's also a question of money and about uh, uh, can we can we um, provide that uh, in uh, the services that there are peer workers uh, connected to the programs that they can uh, support clients and support uh, social workers so that's uh, on innovation and then the communication between governments and local entities uh, you can move on to the next slide i um, once made that uh, that little building. Uh, it's very important to have a good implementation on the field, on the local uh, community. Um, but it's also important to have um, local strategies, local funding, and national strategies and national fundings. If you have only um, implementation on the fields without uh, no local funding you are a bit working on your own if you have only local funding and strategies but no national support it's only so you need both of, or you need on the three levels uh, you need a, a very good communication between that and for the moment uh, in belgium we are working on that aspect uh, very strongly um, we have the luck that in the new governments uh, on the different uh, regional levels, everyone is saying, oh yes, housing first, it works. Oh yes, housing first, it's very important. We have to provide more on housing first. And it's important to, to speak to one each other because uh, it's like a, a game of tennis. You, you, you always put the ball to the other side and then the ball comes back. So uh, who, will, who will take up responsibility? Who will take up um, for the different aspects of, of the, the program? So that's um, a work uh, we are trying to do. And then the next slide, and then um, I think that's uh, that's a slide from uh, our uh, Finnish uh, colleagues. Um, we're saying Finland uh, that's the the paradise. Also, it's very cold, but uh, we should go. We should look at Finland uh, for more uh, than one reason. Uh, the blue uh, the blue part of the graphics it's the amount of homeless people. Um, now we're on the street. So you see in 20 years, it has uh, halved uh, the, the amount of people on the street. And uh, how did they do it? That's the red part of the, uh, the graph. That's by building and by providing a lot of uh, houses for uh, single clients or for small houses uh, for, for people. So it's important to provide uh, social housing or housing in general for homeless people. You cannot help them if there are no houses uh, that, that are uh, free to, to give them. OK, so for so for my um, Thank presentation. Thank you, all very sensible <laughs> uh, ideas and, and challenges there. 
so Christiana, same question to you from your side. You've presented a lot of data, but uh, in terms of barriers and facilitators, if you can tell us something more about that. Okay, let's start. maybe, okay, thank you. No, nope. thank you. <laughs> thank you, that's the one. So I will start with um, facilitators. We um, work in a, a model with a track record of success. Um, this program is grounded on a widespread methodology with a track record of uh, success ending chronic homelessness, resulting in better housing retention at a quick pace with significantly lo uh, lower costs. For what the use of community-based services, so in, instead of on-site services, highly contributes in our opinion. Since its pilot, um, Elma Casa Lisboa Housing First has been focusing its intervention of the cases known as the impossible to housing. And until now, approximately 90% of these impossible to housing people did not return to their previous situation of homeless. Um, so this, this has a big impact. Along with these results, Kshir invested in advocating the impact of this methodology near to political decision makers. And I'm talking about different political parties, councillors, the mayor, the president, inviting them to meet the program and talk with the tenants. Some of them recognized that they were not well informed and considered uh, impossible to house people with a long history of homelessness and problematic drug use before they could see it in first hand. After this experience, most of them changed their opinion and start supporting housing first methodology. Uh, at the moment, uh, Housing First was, uh, was integrated in Lisbon Municipal Plan as a, a strategy to eradicate chronic homelessness. This plan was fast-tracked uh, during the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic and financial support for 300 independent houses were made available, added to the previously 80 um, that, we had, uh, that we have on the city. So this methodology was also replicated in other Portuguese uh, cities and are now being discussed in, in the parliament the possibility to turn it into a national policy. Our experience on harm reduction. So harm reduction and proximity is in shared DNA. The staff work in proximity with tenants, building respect and warm relations. This is the most efficient facilitator for us um, and is the most efficient facilitator in all situations that could happen in the program like this since engagement until crisis management. Other important facilitators are peer specialists. We have peer specialists in, in our team in, uh, in all projects of Kshir. The presence of a peer specialist helps maintaining a client-driven approach, like reducing the risk for a relapse into a, a more medical model uh, practice, the kind of us and them model. And in the other hand, offered trust and creates hope in the possibility of recovery in ways that other staff cannot do. So for us, this is the main facilitators. About the barriers. Elma Casa Lisboa Housing First is mainly funded by Lisbon City Hall and Portuguese Social Security, which combined is less than 80% um, of program total cost. So the program receives annual funding approval, approval that is not um, enough to, to pay it. The Housing First model requires a very specialized and supervised practice, which is difficult to build and keep with this unstable funding um, situation. For this reason, we are continuously pursuing private sources and short-term and long-term funding. About housing speculation. So all houses come from Lisbon, Lisbon's private rental market where property speculation is a reality with housing prices scaling up and the need to compete with the touristic sector. 
High rents are not only difficult for the program maintenance, but also make it more difficult for tenants to graduate for the program and, and rent their own apartment. We rely on long-term relations with landlords and we use some competitive advantage to attract new ones, like when you are your rent payments, uh, the institution credibility, and most important, 24 hours available team to dealing with housing crisis. The last area I want to talk about is about uh, tenants without documents or migrants. So in some cases, tenants in an irre irregular situation face barriers assessing healthcare, uh, documentation, regularization, or assessing social benefits. In these cases, program supports tenants in overcoming these difficulties through the establishment of partnerships with community-based services and by supporting them in the defense of their own rights, sometimes with the help of voluntary uh, lawyers. And it's all for now. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Christiana. And so the same question to you, Elina and Jonas. So barriers or and facilitators though for the implementation of your program in, in Finland. Yes, well, I have to start from the barriers. So so that we what we have been seeing a few years, it is very hard uh, for people who are living in the housing first unit, like a few years and starting to get the life together and feeling better and doing things right, it is very hard to move on from the unit. Even uh, that Gerd just told that we have been uh, making new buildings and houses and we still in Helsinki, we have empty, empty houses and homes, but you just can't reach those. So it is very hard to, to go on and also the one problem is to uh, when you want to stop using drugs it's uh, getting better and better Co correct me Jonas if I'm I, I'm not <laughs> no right reaction but uh, it is sometimes hard uh, to get get some some help for uh, your drug problem when you want it so so that is a, a problem in here in big cities sometimes so usually it's like, I want to stop using, you should get on to taxi and to the, <laughs> to the institutes to stop using drugs. Of course, we all know that it doesn't go like that, but uh, also it has been uh, hard. To, now it's getting better, hard to get the authorities to come our unit to work with us. So we need so many people work with us when, we, when somebody wants to start working somewhere we, we need to, collect a group so we can start everything right and the customer knows that what, what should done do tomorrow and what's happening next and who is responsible for anything. So that has, has been hard also. And even now with this COVID situation, it has been of course harder because sometimes when the customer is willing and wanting to see people, people don't want to see you because of this situation. So that's unfair because when you do everything right, uh, sometimes people move. And first day they ask, what should I do to get own apartment? Not this housing first unit. I wanna be just, I want to live in your next door. So then we tell that when you do this and this and this, and we help, we have this uh, road to change and all the right tools. So people are working on the road of change and doing everything right. And then asking, where is my apartment? And we are just, oh my God, we don't have that yet. So that's unfair situation too. Yeah, it's too much bureaucracy here in Finland as well. And if you have some kind of client who can manage himself doing such a daily things, in very cool, very bad shape, uh, somatically, for example, and we can see that there is no sense that you can't be here anymore because we can't support you as much as we should. Then we are trying to get the person to the to the place which is more, you know, more treatment place. Uh, but they, they they don't they don't want to take take it because they think it's our case, it's your case. And there is social workers, there are our unit, and there are surgery as well. And there, you know, the ball is going 
from myself to other people and, and so on. So it's maybe too much bureaucracy as well here in Finland in some cases. Yes, even in the older uh, drug use or alcohol problem, it is very hard to go to move to nursing home when you yeah. are so old that you can't even use anything. So you are just here because we take everybody, but it, <laughs> it's, it's not unfair when you need more support. Like they see in a shower, we help here. Of course, we we have to because we help everybody. But it's not fair because it would be better to live in a unit with more support when you are getting older. And quite often we have to tell to the other partners that this is not healthcare unit. Yes. And they don't understand it. Yes. They think we can do search <laughs> operations. Yes. Brain surgeons work here. Yes, just joke, but not, it's it's hard. It's hard. I'm sure. Thank you for that. So I think we can move to the finishing line of our conversation with the third question. So and this is uh, finishing on a positive note, I would say. So lessons learned on uh, on your side about your implementation, about the barriers you face, but you know the solutions you found or that you will found and that you want to share with uh, our our audience. So once again, Gert, with you. Yeah, three things uh, I, I want to say very shortly that we have some time for the questions also. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a work in progress. So I think Housing First will be never uh, at his end or never be completed. Uh, as long as there are people on the street, uh, we still have to work further and there will be always challenges. So it's not that uh, we can say, oh no, we have, we have ended our program, we can answer all questions and we are where we are. Um, Secondly, it's, uh, there is no impossibility. Uh, it means that we cannot predict uh, at, at forehand which group or which people will have success in the housing first. Uh, we have seen uh, people with severe problems who were very successfully in keeping their house and living on a better way. And we have seen people where we thought, oh, this could be very easily. This is uh, going very nice in the beginning, who had a lot of problems to keep their apartment, to, to stay in their houses. So it's very um, hard to predict uh, on, on, on behalf of a group to say this will work and this will not work. So on the other hand, it's not, don't, don't uh, try to uh, divine uh, groups and to say, oh no, that group is not good or that group uh, that will not work. I think Housing First uh, is a solution for people with uh, severe needs and just try it and you, you will see how it works. Uh, secondly, and that's not something I uh, found, it's uh, about, uh, it's something I picked uh, up from our Scottish friends, it's uh, the word stickability. Uh, the Scottish are already 10 years in housing first and there's, they had a, a very nice uh, report and that's one of the things I uh, remember from it. Stickability is the way to stick to your client and to, to keep in touch with uh, the the persons you, you follow. It's about uh, loving them. It's about uh, keeping contact. It's about uh, being uh, present. Um, you, the support has to be, be long lasting. We know it, it has to be flexible, has to be accountable. All those uh, very uh, uh, words we know, but it's, it's not, you don't have to worry about uh, clients that are not keeping up with the organization and who drops out. No, you have to worry about uh, your colleagues or yourself or your organization who's not keeping up with your clients. And that's for me a very important lesson and something that the what makes really the difference between a housing first service and all the other good services who are providing to people. But when it comes to uh, keeping up with clients, to stick to clients, then we are from housing first, I can say we are doing that next level thing that other 
sometimes uh, will, will fail to do. So that's uh, for me the most important thing. Excellent, thanks a lot. Cristiana? Uh, so what we have learned over these eight years of experience, some ideas I will share with, with Geert. Um, so effective responses need to be grounded on the, on the lived experience of people and to address clients' priority. This is a, um, a, a big important lesson in our perspective. Housing is a priority survival and meet the primal needs of refugees and safety and others. Treatment first model, um, as well as abstinence only approach was developed from the clinician's perspective, uh, rather than from the people with live experience in homeless and problematic drug use. Uh, the second idea is that housing also gives the grounds to managing consumption. So it is easier for a person to manage consumption in a protected context where basic needs are assured. We should not ignore that substance consumption and its numbing effect can be a coping mechanism to deal with the traumatic experience of homelessness. And each person has their own goals and true recovery starts with a choice and self-determination to, to pursue them. And this is, is, the difference, is, the dif is the difference between our person and other kind of approaches. Next slide, please. Um, as Gert said, housing first um, services can house most people who have experienced chronic homelessness with success. However, a small percentage, which uh, appears to be consistent, consistent through the, the literature, will have difficulty achieving housing stability. However, it is impossible to predict with confidence the individual characteristics associated with housing instability, and these reasons justify trying housing first with all eligible persons, uh, uh, people. So, of course, that for people who keep experiencing ongoing housing instability, alternatives should be considered. In, uh, um, in the aspect of tackle uh, homelessness and all its human and financial costs, we need to think and implement an integrated strategy. And this integrated strategy um, will need to think in a strong community-wide prevention of homelessness and its main uh, uh, driver, that is poverty, increasing social support and affordable housing, um, the second point is long-term solutions uh, focus on supporting individual journey toward recovery in a client's perspective and community integration. A third point will be quality shelters with an easy access, and I'm uh, talking about without strict preconditions, um, and for emergencies only. Supporting labor market integration and um, the last point, the last point, improvement in data collection to assess the real extent of homelessness and its consequences is also important. So the last but not the least, tenants should be the leading advocates for Housing First, bringing their lived experience while attending meetings with political decision makers or conferences in the community. They really are our best partners. And I think this is the, the main ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Christiana. Really, really excellent ideas. And then uh, last but not least, last question to you, Elina and Jonas. I will, in, in the meantime, stop sharing my screen so we can really get into the more conversation question to answer. But please. So, so I think the most important thing we need to remember then when you are in homeless or you are have have addiction problem, it is a bigger problem than you can never see when you look at somebody's face or anything. So it's a deeper problem. So when you want help, it takes time. So you can't do anything in six months or in one year. That's impossible. But the change 
is so we all know if we have been on a diet or start trying exercising or new program, you collapse all the time. Mondays are bad. So you really need to understand the main problem. Also, one thing that I want everybody working in this area because Gert and Christiana, you already told so 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 many things that we can agree, Chris. So so I'm not going to say that again. But we need to be rolling stones. We need to roll everything all the time, and we cannot rest until we have no homelessness <laughs> in this world. But that doesn't mean that you don't need a rest in a once in a while, because you need to rest. You need to sit back. You need to consider to meet new people, you need to talk about it, you can you can save everybody and you don't have to try, but you need to roll all the time because then the customer will learn that we are rolling together in this situation. When we are rolling, we get the new ideas and new ideas are never bad. You can try it and you can go wrong. Even if you, if you never try, you can never find something new. So, Jonas. I agree. Jonas agrees. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank you for this round of uh, answers. I think many of you have already touched upon the points asked in our questions and answers point. I will try to summarize some of the questions. For example, one is about the label housing first. Someone asks if you think that the implementation considers also all the work you are mentioning on psychosocial supports, uh, social worker, or if there is a risk that is considered a failure because not uh, implemented uh, as it should be. I don't know if any of you would like to comment on this. Uh, yes. Christian. Um, I just want to say that housing first is not just housing. And this is an important message. Housing first is housing with support, housing with a connection to community services. Um, and the fidelity of the model is so important because of these aspects. Uh, I think Geert talk about that, and it's it's very important to maintain um, these principal aspects, and uh, they are related with scattered housing, um, with the, with working with the impossible to housing population. This is our um, our target group. Um, this is a project that uh, brings, is a, is a harm reduction project. So um, the relationship are really, really important in this uh, methodology. Um, people who implement this need to really believe in this proximity ap approach, this close and respectful relations with clients, with client capacity to choose, um, because this was, will permit a, a, a person to return to, to the community and um, to feel really integrated. But would you also like to comment because the questions were addressed to Christiana and you mainly on this uh, topic? Uh, I, would, I would agree with, uh, with Christiana. Um, and when I started in Housing First as coordinator, I said Housing First is giving houses to homeless people who are uh, with, with uh, very high needs. So I say yeah, Housing First, it's, it's crucial, but it's only a part. It's about also about sport and about uh, recovery and about giving a new, new future to people. So I think um, um, it's like giving... Uh, uh, someone who need glasses to see, giving them a car and, and not giving them glasses to, to help them. So uh, it, it's, and say, oh, he, he's doing accidents. Uh, we don't, we have to take back the car. So no, it's about giving people a car and glasses to see. So it's uh, the same. It's very important to, to, um, to look for support and, and to, to continuous that support. I, uh, 
uh, also I try to to answer the question in the chat what about how long do you stay in a project of housing first it's the same it's as long as needed and as long as needed uh, there will be support and there will be a coaching and of course um, that depends from situation to situation. It will start with a very uh, high needed support with, with uh, several meetings once uh, in a week. And then uh, when it goes better, it will be uh, easier and, and, and smoother. And there will be one, one meeting a week or, or one meeting once, once in a month. But when there is a problem, when there is a, a relapse uh, in, in drugs use, when there is uh, problems with the neighborhood, uh, there can be support uh, once again, and that's very important to to see that that it's not only giving people a house and then leaving them to their own. That's uh, that's not what we want to be. But the housings also are very important. So if you don't have a house, you cannot start. Uh, you can have really good support, but supporting people who on the streets uh, was always also mentioned. And you have people who are doing their best and have to wait uh, months or maybe years to, to finally have a house. So that's also a very big problem. Another group of question is about the alcohol harm reduction, Christiana mentioned, and more in general about the harm reduction interventions related to drugs. I'm trying to summarize groups of, of questions. I don't know if uh, Christiana would like to start and then the others would like to, to join on this point. I, I don't know if I un uh, understood the, um, the question that is, only about the managed alcohol program, the strategy, all the strategies in Housing First project. About I put together a okay. few questions. I think they are related to harm reductions, okay. related to drugs. You mentioned something on alcohol and there is a specific question on this. Okay, so about the strategies to tackle, to tackle this drug use, the first one is housing, just housing because um, a, a person in a situation of homeless and um, in almost absolute social exclusion find, find it more difficult to manage their consumption and um, it makes their easier to manage this consumption after entering the house. Sometimes the team does not do anything and we see that the, the person starts reducing um, consumption. The other one that is a, a strategy also is a relationship. So staff must put in place everything needed to establish uh, this respectful and warm relationship to, to demonstrate a real commitment uh, with, with a person. Um, we believe in the person and it makes it easier for the person to believe it in itself. Um, then we have in Portugal a network of services. So in 2001, um, this Portuguese decriminalization law set the field for a, a, um, implementation of important community-based responses. And in, in this set of responses, we have a lot of proximity responses included. So this network um, facilitates to refer a person to a low threshold methadone program or other host, a treatment team or a therapeutic community. Uh, so it's, it's easier to connect the person with these community services. Um, then these aspects of harm reduction that I was talking about before. And we, um, we implement this, these harm reduction strategies on the house. We deliver this um, aseptic material, we talk about alcohol and we help the, the person to manage this consumption. Uh, it's all the approach that we do to drug consumption is a very open approach. And we see that the, most of the people do um, this way. Uh, they start to implement um, a consumption with, with more 
in, in more hygienic um, conditions, to use and to change material, and then to connect to the services end, in the end, um, the person could manage his or her um, consumption. So it's a way and it's, it's take time uh, and it's take respect for this pace. I, Can I, I ask, know. sorry. Sorry, Christian. No, I don't know if I if I, if I answer it, but I... it was a very broad. I made it a very yeah. broad question. So, <laughs> Elena, would you like to add a comment? We skipped you in the first question about if there are any drugs-related harm reduction interventions linked to to your project. Yes, of course, and I think going to agree with what Christian said. Yes, but also when. When we are uh, participating with this pro pro problem of using, we are uh, start, started uh, started you, uh, offering you possibilities to uh, make a make 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 something else. So when you wake up in the morning, you can get totally wasted, or you can get, get uh, just a little bit wasted. So you can go to work. So so when you are needed and you have promised example for Jonas or me that we have a meeting tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. You don't want to come in wasted because we need to do something special. So when you have every day, every day you have something special to do, you are not so wasted. You will maybe use a little bit different drugs or, or not so much. And uh, some customer just told me that I have been working in this kitchen like four days Tomorrow is my day off, and tomorrow I will be so wasted that you don't want to see me tomorrow. So we say, see you after that. I was like, oh my God, this is great. Of course you need a day off because you have been doing everything so well. So it's been important being like everybody else are. Just, just life. We don't need you to change. You can be yourself. You can make, make your choices by yourself. Yeah, do Thank have to have motivation. So to make changes of using drugs or alcohol. Yes. I can say that now you have to quit your alcohol using or drug drug using one. It has to come from your inside yourself and have this small motivation and maybe then bigger motivation. And when I see that moment, you know, small moment that our client is interested, for example, going to the rehab or or methadone uh, treatment, then I have to catch him or her and try to support her or him go to forward. That small moment. Thank you. I picked a question because I think it's an interesting perspective. Do you notice any gender differences in your access to, to, to your intervention? Gert, would you like to start? Have you thought of it? Um, gender issues? Um, not exactly, but we see that a lot of homeless people are, are uh, male. So uh, the, the, the most of the clients are, are uh, single male uh, clients. Um, there are some women also. I think it's it's 80, 20 percent. Uh, so there's a little uh, on, on women, if that was the question. Yes, yes, it was the question. Christiana, do you notice any gender difference, more affluence from men or, or women or? Yes, um, we have less women, as is Gert said, uh, we, we saw this difference, we see this difference on the streets. We have more men, more, um, more men on the street. In the program, our women are normally younger with um, a long experience uh, in a home situation, but younger, and um, most of them with a long history of uh, trauma. So um, for us, it's a target group that um, we need to approach because um, the risk is higher for, uh, for women when they are in the streets. And we need to have uh, a trauma-informed approach when we are um, um, connecting with these women.
Elina, any comment on your side? We are more men who are out your homeless than, than, than women, but you know, women are as well, but maybe the numbers of women are not so, you know, we don't know exactly, because maybe they are living in other partners or people's houses, but maybe the most, most they are older men, and now the new, new, new thing is that uh, younger people are, are, you know, growing up number of, of how, how can I say it, without houses. Yeah, they, they are it's just, growing up all the time. Younger and younger people, they're dropping out from the system somehow. And it's, it's very, very sad at the moment. And also it is easier to, to get drugs from the street than beer from the market. So that's like the Finnish problem. You used to get the beer from the market. Now you can just, it's cheaper to buy drugs. So that's a problem that is growing. And that is the main reason why younger and younger people are better better shape and they can't live in in normal houses so that's like it's growing up this group so thank you there are still many questions many interesting and specific questions that we will keep into consideration and we will try to divert to our speakers afterwards and and now i would like to leave the floor to alexis for his concluding remarks thank you alexis uh, thank you, Marika. Uh, well, first, uh, uh, I would like to thank again uh, Christiana, Elina, Jonas, and Geert, also Alessandra, Marika, but uh, also Amparo and Marco. I think it was very interesting. Uh, I see we have a, a lot of questions, uh, a lot of very interesting points. Um, I'm not going to summarize because there were too many things, but ju just a few things I would like to highlight or insist uh, because we, those are things we are. Uh, supporting also as the European Drugs Agency in the in the advice or support we give to the member states and to the EU institutions. Uh, the first is, uh, I think, one of the most innovative things that happened or that was accelerated last year because of COVID is uh, the, the 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 support to services without preconditions. Uh, I can tell you. Uh, uh, 30 years ago, I met my first uh, street worker. It was quite a, a surprise for uh, a young clinical, clinical psychologist like me, because first of all, I could not meet that person in the normal office. I had to be myself in the streets. <laughs> and then I met also Dutch street workers. And they were not even working, they were running in the streets. So I had to run with them. Um, and I remember I, I was there to speak already 30 years ago about uh, HIV, AIDS and drug use. And the, the street workers, they rejected me uh, because they say, well, we don't care about HIV. And I was a bit shocked and they say, well, because we care about the people. And the key, the key priority is the needs of people. So, uh, so it's, it's not a surprise that uh, what has been said by the three speakers and I think reflected also by some of the, of the, of the questions or the comments is uh, the fact that uh, we need to focus on the need of, uh, of the people without precondition. And I think it was not, I think it was Christiana or Elina referring to the fact that it was more the clinical approach that required people to be clean. I think it was also a moralistic approach uh, that if you were not clean from alcohol or drugs, uh, in any case, it's like you did not deserve any access to help. Um, and, and it was also a way for people from some of the centers to protect themselves, because I think they were, they did not feel prepared. And it was not always, uh, the centers were not equipped both in staff, but also in training or education to cope with people who may still be consuming or under the influence of, which, which uh, brings me to the next point, which is the extreme vulnerability of people. Uh, and the homeless. And certainly there are places, cities and countries where during the crisis, there have been more homeless people uh, and there may be more in the future because of the economic crisis. And of course, this links me, this leads me to the comment I, I made in the beginning that uh, we, we were told by many of you last year in our webinars, in the surveys, in the online focus groups, my meeting with some of you, including with Unath from Spain, 
saying you need to encourage the authorities tell them don't cut the social services uh, and, and don't don't cut the specialized services but we need both a big part of the help that was provided or is provided today is in a combination of the of the of the different services um, i think what is also new if i compared with 10 years ago is the fact that uh, there is more harm reduction approach and it goes together with the with the fact that there are now programs where we don't ask for preconditions is the fact that we we have learned to uphold to put on hold uh, our judgments and try to 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 deal with people to take them like other brothers and sisters human beings like us that's the start uh, there is no improvement if we don't start with that and and i think what has been impressive also is the number of shelters uh, that have been opened uh, i remember that i've seen uh, an experience in in spain i think it was in barcelona uh, of uh, another shelter without preconditions in uh, athens they managed uh, during the pandemic to create a new uh, uh, center uh, so that's that's uh, very important Another initiative that uh, a need that was highlighted by our three speakers today is, is the fact that we need to bring the services together, but we need to be patient or client centered. Already patient, it illustrates well, you have to wait. So I think it's better to use the term client. And this means that uh, we need to have more initiatives like here in Lisbon, the team of Dr. Rui Marino in the Hospital Santa Maria, they have moved the unit working on the testing and treatment of EPSI to the prison, because it was not possible to bring the prisoners from the prison to the service. This is how we can make a difference. Uh, and this is how we, we can help uh, uh, continue to make improvements. I think uh, one of the last points I wanted to highlight is, is the fact that uh, uh, we, we face also in some cases an aging population. And I can imagine that uh, uh, what we see in some documentary in some uh, national TV channels is that because of the economic crisis, we see more older people who are losing their house. They may find themselves also in the street. So even if it is not because of any substance use, uh, it can become a, a bigger problem. I, I really like the concept of stickability uh, developed by your, Spain, uh, your Scottish colleagues. So um, I think we, Marika and her team, they should continue to work on it. Um, and I, I would like to finish because I, I think it was a Christiana who said uh, that tenants are the best partners. I think what is the key and is not something we have just discovered last year with COVID, but what is interesting is in some cases, uh, authorities, mostly at, at local level, they start to, to understand that we are talking about human beings and we need to trust them as partners in the relationship and in the work. So I think that's the key message. We need to continue to work. Uh, and I, I would like uh, to say that uh, at CMCDDA, we are preparing a new initiative to further support you and the innovations in the field. So my call to you is send us your suggestions. Tell us how, in line with what we started last year, with the webinars, also maybe a topic for one of the next webinars, how we can meet your needs to better identify and get access to innovations. And we are going to, we are working on the proposal and we will launch a new initiative in, com in the coming months uh, as soon as possible. So thank you very much. You help us to be more useful. That's how it has to work.